There are two groups of acids or two kinds of acids. We have inorganic acids. They can also be called mineral acids. And then the second group is called organic acids. Now, when we talk of inorganic acids or the mineral acids, we are talking about acids that can be prepared from the reactions of mineral substances. Uh, so mostly, these kind of acids are artificially prepared. They are man-made acids from natural uh, uh, substances that have undergone reaction. So they are acids that can be prepared from the reactions of mineral substances. The common ones are HCl, hydrochloric acid, H2SO4, tetraoxosulfate 6 acid, which is commonly called sulfuric acid. We have HNO3, triozonitrate 5 acid, simply called nitric acid. Then we have A3PO4, tetraozophosphate 5 acid, simply put phosphoric acid. These are examples of inorganic acids. They are the acids that are prepared from the reactions of mineral substances. So these are the inorganic acids that are common to us that when you visit every secondary school in this country and on this planet, you will meet it and a lot of things are done with them. Now, we keep on. Our next group to know is organic acids. So, so I told you we have two groups of acids or two types of acids, inorganic acids and then organic acids. What are organic? Anything organic is natural. We find it in nature. So they are acids found in nature or acids found in living things. They are acids derived from plants and animals. Yes, we get them from plants and animals. So I have some few ones on the screen and I've even indicated the source. Where do we get them from? We have methanoic acid. We can get them from ants and bees. Have you been bitten by an ant before or be given a sting by a bee? You see that when an ant bites you, it is very painful. It is the uh, methanoic acid that the ant has injected into you and you feel the pain and begin to rub the place. That is it. It's natural. Uh -huh. It is found in ants and bees. Then the next one, as an example, is uh, ethanoic acid. Where can we find ethanoic acid? We get it in sour palm wine. So we can get it in palm wine and vinegar. And vinegar, we can get it there. So these are all organic acid. Lactic acid, we get it in milk, sour milk. Me and you have taken breast milk before. Aside that, we are grown-ups, and we take milk such as ideal milk, carnation, name them. They all contain lactic acid. Then we have citric acid also, which is also an organic acid. We get it from citrus fruits, citrus. Name them. We have lemon, we have oranges. This is where we get this natural acid from. We have palmitic acid. We get it from palm oil. We all know the red oil called palm oil. There are others, so others like tartaric acid, butanoic acid from goat meat and those things. They are all there, plenty. We cannot list them here. So this is just a few to show to you what organic acids are. So I am going back to tell you that they are acids found in nature or found in living things. They are acids derived from living things, such as plants and animals. So far, now we know the two groups of acids. Inorganic acids or mineral acids. Then the next one is organic acids, which we have just explained. Now that we know these two kinds of acids, then we must know the properties of acids. Now, first one, I will say an acid has a sour taste, as you can read on the screen. What uh, taste is being referred to as sour? Uh, let me take an orange that is not ripe. I believe some of you have eaten oranges that are not ripe. When immediately you begin to 
I mean, taste it. It bites your tongue. And that is the nature of sadness. So all acids are like that. The ones I have here, I cannot taste them. Why? Because from the properties, you get to know that they are corrosive. When it pours on my skin, part of my skin will chop off or, I mean, ero be eroded. If it is on my tongue, I will face the same problem. So imagine it goes into me. Then it means my alimentary canal, the gut, whatever, will be eroded. It's a dangerous substance. So, one, I'm saying that it has a sad taste. Two, it changes blue litmus paper to red. We saw it here. If we will use the yellow, but the blue litmus paper is here. If we put it in the acid right now, it is blue, but it will change to red. So as a simple demonstration, let us see. This is our blue uh, litmus paper, and I'm dipping it into the acid, and you see. We can see that the reddish has started, like pink. This is the nature of acids. So this tells you that this is an acid, and this is one of its properties. Now, number three, it has no soapy feel. We all take our bath. We know how soap feels. Whenever you are bathing with soap, it is slippery on your skin. An acid is not like that. So one of the properties of an acid is that it has no soapy feel. Then D, it reacts with a base to form salt and water. This reaction of acids is called neutralization reaction. So a neutralization reaction is a reaction whereby an acid reacts with a base to produce salt and water. It's a property of the substance acid. Then number five, in the concentrated forms, they are corrosive. Yes, a concentrated acid is corrosive, as I've already said. Don't joke with it. It will easily end your life. Now, number six, which is the last one, or number F, water-soluble acids conduct electricity. Yes, because in water, they break down into ions, and the mobile ions can conduct electricity. So once the acid is soluble in water, it can conduct electricity, as we have just read. Please, these are the properties of acids. Now we move on. We look at the uses of acids. What are acids used for? How beneficial are acids to us in the environment? One, they are used to manufacture fertilizers. Yes, like HNO3. We have a fertilizer called ammonium nitrate. It looks like sugar, so that is it. They are used to uh, manufacture dyes. You know, dye as a print in our fabrics. Uh -huh. And then explosives. You remember when Christmas is coming, people normally light uh, crackers and then they crack, boom, uh -huh. like uh, for your Christmas gun or whatever. So all those explosives, they are explosives. And nitric acid is able to do that. So it is used in manufacturing that. So acids could be used in doing uh, manufacturing all this. Number two, it is used in refining petroleum. You know, petroleum is a crude oil, a substance that is deep down under seed beds. And when it is extracted, it must undergo refining. And through the refining, we get petrol, diesel, gas oil, LPG gas, liquefied petroleum gas, all those things, as it is done in Tema, Tor, Tema oil refinery. So whenever they are refining petroleum, acid is also used to assist in the refining process. Now, number three, it is used in cleaning metal surfaces before coating to prevent rusting. Normally, metals undergo rusting. So if you don't want the metal to go rusting, you coat it. And before coating, you can use acid to clean the surfaces, to wipe up surfaces before you coat so that the metal will stay long. It will not undergo any rusting for a long life metal. Then number four, it is used in purification of gold and silver. If you visit the mining areas, uh, in purifying gold, acid is used. After the gold has been extracted, they use it to purify that. Then the last one, as I have there, it is used in the manufacture of glue. We all know glue. Uh, yes, uh, glue to uh, bind two surfaces together. Acid is also used. Uh, so we have types of glue on the market. Some glue faster, and I think you have a name 
for it. Some glue also takes time. You leave it in the air before you clean the two surfaces together and it is held uh, very strong. So these are the uses of acid. So, uh, students, this is what we have covered so far. Now, we know what is meant by acids. We know how acids are defined by the three concepts. As we have just said, Ahenius, Bronstelori, and Lewis. And then we know the two groups of acids, inorganic acids and then organic acids. We know the properties of acids, something characteristic about acids. That is what we mean by properties of acids. And now we know the uses of acids also. Now, having known this, I might ask questions. How does Ahenius define his acids. How many groups of acids do you know? List two properties of acids. If you are able to answer these three questions, then it means you have understood the lesson up to this level. Thank you.